Very good evening. It's 8 p.m. here in Albuquerque, Gordon Bennett TV. I'm Regan Tetlow. This is Thomas Horry. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Regan. Who's on the screen right here? Two teams from the 66 Coupe Aeronautic, Gordon Bennett, still in the air, still flying into the night. We've got France, we've got Germany, head to head. It's exciting, Thomas. It is exciting. It's, uh, it's a race. It's and um, Aero Clubs in France and Germany, be prepared. You will have to do, one of you have to do the Gordon Bennett in two years. <laughs> we just want to get a message. We've got loads of messages through asking about our dear friends from Poland, from Poland One. We really do appreciate all your lovely comments. We've got a little update on them. Yes, yes. So um, the crew can talk to the um, uh, pilots. So they have visited them. They talk to them. Um, and um, one of the pilots will be released shortly out of the hospital and uh, they have a recovery process ahead of them but it looks like that they will fully recover in, a, in, in some time. And thanks for your messages we're gonna you know they'll see them anyway we'll make sure they see all your messages of support so uh, do drop a comment in here on the stream and we'll make sure they see all those. Yeah uh, and they, um, they really appreciate your wishes so keep them coming. 71 hours, 31 minutes ago, the launch happened. What a day it has been. We've thought France won. We're just going to go keep going and going and going. Eventually, they had a lot of speed. They had a lot of height. They came down. We got them on the line. The two Benoits. We had a little chat. Let's see what they had to say. France won. Benoit, Benoit. Good afternoon, my friends. Good evening. Good evening, Matthew. Regan, how are you? Oh, I'm happy to see you, my friend. Very happy to see you. We've had a great flight, didn't we? Indeed you have. I mean, it was just incredible. We wondered when you were going to start descending. You were so high and so fast. You must have seen the coast coming at you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we're, but we, we've got a fantastic uh, team uh, back at home. Wow. That have been uh, leading us and we just followed their, uh, their instructions and uh, we just followed what, what they told us to do. It's nothing, nothing great about it, really. Tell me, tell me about the team and where they are. They are uh, in a hotel in Nancy. Yes. We could not afford to buy them a ticket to Albuquerque. Yes. Not like the Germans. <laughs> but uh, they, the whole French te French team was there for France one, France two, France three. Yes. Unfortunately, France three, as you know, uh, didn't uh, couldn't, didn't start the race, and uh, they are working well there. And the team over there is there's my son, there's my nephew. It's a fa quite a family business. But we got two uh, weathermen which are quite fantastic and. Uh, they really found the vein of wind for us to get uh, speed. And this afternoon, uh, we we're going so fast, uh, so high and so fast. It was incredible. Yeah, everybody, this, if the comments were exploding on social media. People were saying, when are they going to start descending? It's how far are they going to take it? Where are they going to stick that pin? Incredible. And when you passed, when you passed 2,000 kilometers, it was a little mini celebration. Everybody was was really, really excited about that. Well, well I'm, at the moment, I'm very excited because we're still first. I don't think we'll be first for a very long time because I think my friend Willie and Benny and Eric are going to spend another night. Yes. But uh, at the moment, we are, uh, we've just beaten the French record, long distance record. Uh, but in 2019, we beat the record and uh, Two hours later, my friends Vincent landed yes. and beat the record. So I think this year is going to be the same, but it's no problem. Well, congratulations for now for a new French distance record. That is absolutely outstanding. What's happening right now with your location? Your balloon is still up there. Oh, that's that's a very good uh, good. Uh, that's a very good point. Uh, you can see the balloon is uh, above us. It's yes. still uh, still uh, not deflated because. Uh, we are in the middle of a, of a goat farm and the people are too busy, they're very busy, they can't help us, but uh, Andy Caton uh, just uh, rang me and he's sending people to help us. And our crew won't be here before about another four hours because we've been going too fast for them. <laughs> Incredible. How, how do you feel right now? How do you feel? Oh, uh, look! Look at uh, Benoit's green on his face. <laughs> I think we feel very, 
We are very happy, very excited. It was a wonderful race. It was such beautiful weather, such perfect weather. Yes. And uh, it's funny enough because when we got to Albuquerque last week, we thought it would be a very short race. And it turned out to be a very long one. But uh, totally exciting. We never saw a balloon right the first night. We were delayed and we did bad strategy and we were very way backwards from the other team and then uh, we uh, managed to uh, get a good second night and we're up in front and we race we finished the race up in front and were you always heading for the coast today were you expecting to get any north and turn north uh we were expecting to go to the coast and uh we our team and back in France wanted us wanted us to do another night, but we had uh, we were short on ballast. We had only uh, four bags left uh, when we landed, and we thought it was safer to to land tonight and have uh, late. Steve, the, the other guys can catch us up. Yes, I think they will. But never mind. Yeah, never mind. It's a fantastic race. I think we'll be at least third, and. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it's a possible third, of course, but there's also a possible um, double France win, one and two. That could be on the cards, of course. Uh, that would be lovely because, uh, you know, we are all, uh, we're all very close friends in the French team. Uh, William Benny, uh, like many other people in the world, we've been many times to their place in Gladbeck yes. and uh, Willy taught us how to fly gas balloons, so that way it's great respect to them. Yeah, absolutely. Great respect for all competitors here this year, leaving Albuquerque. And we look forward to having you back here with us, the Benoits. Yes, we will. We will, of course. We will not miss that. Not miss the opportunity to have a drink with you, my friend. I absolutely cannot wait. Thank you. A tout à l'heure, messieurs. I mean, 2,359, 2,359 kilometers. Current leaders, not bad. It's great. I mean, that is an accomplishment. I, I have to have deep respect for two Benoists. I mean, seriously, flying three days, flying across the whole uh, continent. They are breaking their own uh, record. It's, um, it's, it's really, really great. I, I, I have really deep respect. And it will be a tough one to beat them. It's, it's not that because two are in the air, they will be ending up th uh, third. This will be a tough race. First of all, the other two have to overtake them. And then the race begins between those two. But right now the race is between France two, uh, no France one. It is yeah, France one, and the other ones. Can we have the map on? It's good to see where they landed actually, so people can put a reference in their mind. This is where they uh, finished their race so far, with uh, France one. So you can see they they landed right um, north of Savannah. Um, and that, that, that's already quite close to the coast. And here you see the two balloons that are still in the air. Um, and this is some, uh, some distance they have to cover, especially since they are not flying right to that, but they are flying right now to the north. So there, there's really some, uh, some fly, still f uh, serious flying to be done by France 2 and by Germany 1 in order to beat uh, France 1. As I said, a splendid accomplishment what they did there. Yeah, we're going to get into the details throughout this. Stick around. It's going to be a long show, this one. We've got lots of content to go to, lots of videos as well. The teams that have landed, we've been in touch with all of them. So stick around and keep the questions coming in. We really do like them. Have we got a question, uh, Mark, at the moment? Something about the, uh, the uh, fuel, was it? Or? Yeah, we, there's, there's actually almost a conversation going on on the chat right now about the helium versus hydrogen and that in the race when it restarted in the 80s was actually started to use with helium and now we changed to hydrogen and basically what's the reason and how how does that work so um obviously um in the 80s we started here with helium yeah. because the balloons back there uh, didn't have the technique to fly with hydrogen you have to have a special coating in order to fly with hydrogen, an anti-static coating, and a lot of the U.S. balloons did not have that. Today's uh, U.S. balloons and all gas balloons have this anti-static coating, and therefore it is uh, very safe uh, to fly with uh, hydrogen balloons. 
and um, uh, obviously hydrogen is also cheaper than helium. Mark? And th there, there's actually a follow-on question also about what's, what's the cost to fill a balloon? Well, um, that that's strongly depends on whether you are somewhere at the source of uh, hydrogen, like for example Gladbeck, yes. the, the, the place of uh, Willy and Benny Eimers. There the costs are minimal. There are just, I, I would say, some tens of dollars, you know, so that, uh, that even some hundreds of dollars. Or if you have to ship the uh, hydrogen, like in, in this case here, and there, there you are talking about a, uh, a good thousand of dollars, you know. Keep your comments coming in. We really do appreciate it. And do us a favor as well, if you can, subscribe onto YouTube and hit share. Please give us a share. Let's get it out there. Let's get it up the algorithm and get everybody joining in the conversation. Also landing today was the two young Germans, Germany too. Let's catch up with them. This is it. We made it. Woo! What a flight. We'll be right back. Life with Regan. Germany 2, here we are. Guys, how are you doing? Really good, really good. We had a quite interesting landing, but everything worked. Everything is fine. We have already everything packed in the car. As you can see, it is uh, quite hot here. Um, <laughs> so I'm sweating like whatever. And uh, yeah, we already had our landing beer. Good. And yeah, we had we had great help from the locals. Like right after landing, the landowner was here, who was perfectly fine with us landing on his field. We had some um, local hot air balloonists who came to join us and help us packing the balloon. And um, we are about to head to a hotel and then to uh, to dinner with them. That's amazing! What a story! Tell me about the landing. How was it? It was a it was a true challenge because uh, yeah we we landed uh, in the afternoon so the, the thermals were still active so the balloon was going <laughs> from left to right and we said, it's gonna be that field oh no it's gonna be that one oh it's gonna be this one yeah, and by doing that it was going up and down as well so um, yeah it was interesting but we managed so everything is fine two two questions where's Gerhard uh, Sitting on the driver's seat, I think. He's ready to go. All right. <laughs> Second question. There he is. There he is. <laughs> there, he is. Yeah. there he is. Second question. <laughs> Second question. Golden sandbag? Well, the golden sandbag, unfortunately, was empty yesterday evening. And yesterday not because evening. we drank it, but because we wanted to do the third night quite badly. And yeah. we were not sort of balanced, but we were quite on the limit. So we decided yesterday evening that the golden bag needs to leave... Us or the okay. stuff that is in the golden bag had, had to leave us. Yes. Hey guys, what a race! And since we have a what a race! And three, since three we have nights. a good retrieve crew, we knew. Sorry, sorry Regan. Since we have a good retrieve crew, we knew they they will be on side with all we need. Uh, well, I saw the first picture with your first beers. That was quite a few hours ago, so it's probably been a great afternoon so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we we were celebrating a bit with the locals and taking our time to pack everything, to fit everything in the van because it's really a tight fit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we made it, and uh, now uh, next stop, uh, a well-deserved shower. So tell me, one thousand six hundred and forty-eight kilometers. How does that stack up in your uh, previous gas flights? Well. For awesome. Us, yeah, awesome. For us, it's really amazing because it's been the long flight we did so far and also the furthest flight we did so far. So two for, uh, two more records for ourselves, basically, um, that we can improve on in the next years, hopefully. And we don't we don't want to spoil it, but it might be our best uh, position in the Gordon Bennett as well. <laughs> Correct, yes. It might be your best position in the Gordon Bennett. Does that mean no more? No, 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 no. Uh, up to now. Up to now. We uh, have to up say, to but, now. But Thank you. So I, thought, far, I thought you were retiring be, live we... on the call. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was so much fun. The flight was so much fun um, that we're definitely going to continue. And uh, of course, you got a lot of time up in the air. So you're always uh, thinking about how to improve things, yeah. how to, uh, yeah things we need things we don't need to take along to save weight and and all that stuff so the ideas are uh yeah coming up during the flight and uh there's we always we always looking for improvement yeah. so we definitely want to do more of these flights for us for the team here 
your content you've been providing has been absolutely brilliant. I was just talking to Christian earlier, how it's improved year after year. Really, really fantastic stuff. Thanks very much for that. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we we uh, we we really felt a bit uh, sorry during the last two days because we couldn't we couldn't send uh, the the footage we would uh, have liked to, because uh, yeah we were flying in almost four thousand meters and the internet co coverage was a lot worse once we were above three thousand meters. So yeah, <laughs> as I as I mentioned earlier, we we, we might need to think about uh, satellite internet for yeah. the next Gordon Bennett. That's right. And what about strategy? How much were you involved with the uh, team back in the headquarters and how much was it your decisions? Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, as, as you know, we, we are having uh, one command center or one team for all three uh, German teams. Yes. And um, that was working really, really good. The guys did a great job. And um, so a big thank you to them right here from from the uh, from the landing field thank you guys awesome work yeah. and um because you asked if it is our decision or their decision i think in the end the decision is always on the pilot but they provide you with everything you need with the best tips they can um so and i think they worked really really well this year yes um as we already said we were quite quite low on ballast so we decided on on uh uh, we decided yesterday evening not to go higher as they would have told us to 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 get more to the east but uh we preferred to save some ballast and stayed a little bit lower which worked quite well for us because we 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 wanted to do the third night from the beginning that was our big target right. to do 1000 miles and uh three nights right and um in the end of course we we are the guys in the basket but they made it possible so uh Thank you. Yeah, just looking at the tracks of what we had with the team, there was you and some others that were quite far back compared to the, the leaders. Was that intentional? Well, in the beginning, in the first night, we took like a, the, the low level chat and made ourselves way, way to the front. Yes. And then, um, well, in the beginning or the afternoon or the, the, the second night, basically, we kind of dropped out of the fast winds that we wanted to take. Yeah. But some of this was obviously too, we wanted to save ballast to make the third night possible. Yes. We were looking on that first night, how a lot of people had gone high over the mountains and you were staying down low and we were discussing, you know, what you were thinking there and how you were doing it. But what a great result anyway. Like you said, a thousand miles, three nights. Well done, guys. Thank you, Regan. Thank you. We look forward bye, guys. to look forward to seeing you back here. Yeah. See you in Albuquerque. See bye, you bye. Albuquerque. Bye, bye. bye. So we are receiving a lot of questions about this golden bag. You know, this is a, a mysterious thing, and and the bag is really golden. So they have a lot of colors. You know, uh, ten of each color, so they know how how many bags they have. But they have one golden bag, and this golden bag is uh, filled with our favorite beer, Stuttgarter Hofbräu, from yeah. our balloon club. And um, this bag is there after landing, you know, if your chase crew is not close to you, that you, you are able to celebrate your landing. But this golden bag will be sacrificed for a good cause. So yesterday they emptied um, this golden content of this bag. They emptied in the air by dropping it. And uh, yes, yeah, so, but, but I think they are very happy. And since the chase crew was close by, they were able to get their, their celebration beer as well. <laughs> Brilliant. 71 hours, 49 minutes. It is the target. It's been set by France 1, 2,359.95 kilometers. That's a God of Bennett, the longest distance landing away from where you start. And right now we've got France 2, 2,127, and Germany 1, 2,104. It's game on. It's incredible. I, I can tell you this will be a close nail biter at night. It will be a nail biter. First of all, will they beat France one? That's that's the one of the nail biters. The second nail biter is who of them two will get the furthest north. That's the second. And the third one is if the first one lands, is the, the second one able to overfly the first one? So yeah. there, there's a lot of action will be going on in the next 12 hours, I suppose. USA won, Noah and Brenda had an amazing competition. Let's catch up with them. USA won, Brenda and Noah, good evening. Good evening, Regan. Good to see you. It's good to be back. Really good to see you guys as well. Oh, we've got some extra light. There you go. <laughs> wow. Somehow help. What a, what a race. What a flight for you guys. 
It was. It was. Uh, it was a long one for us. It was both both of our first time going a third night in the gas balloon, and uh, so we pushed our limits. We uh, we both set some personal bests uh, for endurance, for uh, distance, and so we're very very happy with our flight. Absolutely. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, we went the distance. The, 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 the third night. Did <laughs> The, uh, the photograph you posted where you were making that decision, you were looking at each other like that. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, we, what, a, what a blast. It was our first fl uh, time flying together, and, and uh, what a joy. Brenda is uh, a hell of a pilot, and uh, she has a command presence, and uh, she is wonderful to fly with. She she enunciates everything she's doing, and you know exactly what she's thinking, and it's just, it was a joy. It was We, we had a blast. We had an absolute blast. We did. We did. Just listening to the pair of you on your interviews that like you've been, well, your, your videos you've been sending down, you both have a very assured, calming, authoritative nature about you. It, it makes me want to just sit down in front of you and listen to stories. It really does. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, you know, Brenda and I only decided to fly together about three weeks ago, and we had a number of telephone calls. Uh, you know, Brenda lives in Texas. I'm in Rhode Island. That's a long way away. So we had a number of phone calls to discuss the flight and, and how we wanted to handle it. And um, and it was great. And, and we honestly, you know, got to know each other a little better before that. But uh, everything I've learned about Brenda, I, I, I can say to her, God, you're just like me. It's hilarious. And the whole time during the flight, it was like, I would do that. You know, it, it's, hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah, very similar. We've just been speaking to the Benoits and French one. And I was asking them, did they ever have an intention of catching some north or were they always aiming for the coast? What about you guys? Uh, we uh, we just intended to fly as long as comfortable and as long as we could do so safely. Uh, we didn't really want to push the coast. There's a lot of swamp out in eastern Georgia, and uh, you know we've had Brenda's had some experience with a swamp that she didn't want to repeat. Uh, so we wanted a nice spot that uh, that was going to be uh, easy retrieval, and and uh, we had great weather on the approach and landing. It was a beautiful, beautiful day to have a have a balloon landing. A lot of people ask on the social media, and myself as well included, about the endurance of that flight for three nights in such a confined space. I mean, if somebody asked you to stay in the most comfortable hotel and st stay on the sofa for three nights, it would be a challenge. But to put yourself through what you do, just how much of an endurance is it? It's everything. It's absolutely everything. And I learned so much from Noah. Honestly, that was something I was really looking forward to yeah. is seeing how other people did this. I mean, I've flown with other pilots. Obviously, I've flown with Willie a lot. You know, I've flown with Peter, I've flown with Brian, but I was really looking forward to flying with Noah. And one of the things that he really stressed was how important it was to be comfortable. Yeah. And, you know, little things like brewing coffee. I mean, literally, I had freshly brewed coffee every single morning and evening. It was fabulous. Hot washcloth yes. to wipe down your face. I mean, it it really, really went a long way to helping with endurance. I, I was surprised just how much that one element of comfort truly brought you to that point. It was it was pretty remarkable. So that was that part was definitely really, really neat. Noah is an incredibly talented pilot. He was so willing to, you know, push the boundaries and really try to see what sort of um, personal best he could he could beat. And so I was in it, same thing. So it, it really worked out well. I think we really made a good team. It was totally enjoyable, definitely a, a thousand percent. <clears throat> Is there ever a point in such a long flight where you start doubting whether you can actually continue physically or... Uh, I, I uh, absolutely, um, you know, and, and it really goes to how disciplined you are in getting rest right. and how good that rest is. And you really have to make it a priority to get rest and to try to be as comfortable as you can and to actually sleep and to uh, be religious about saying you need to, you know, I'm going to take the next four hour shift and you need to get down and, and, and sleep and get good sleep. And if you don't do that, you're going to hit a wall and it's going to be, and you can put yourself in a dangerous situation. We did, we really wanted to avoid that. Always want to avoid that. So, um, you know, on this flight, it, it was, um, being very cognizant of that, I think really helped a lot. And knowing that, uh, that that was a real risk, yeah. um, you know, we were pretty, pretty good about that. And, and I think that made it easy to get through that third night. 
uh, we had a frank discussion about whether a fourth night was a possibility and, and um, agreed that that just wasn't going to happen for us. So um, so tonight was was uh, was what we agreed to terminate the flight and um, break conditions and just a beautiful, beautiful uh, evening to land a balloon. Absolutely stunning. It'd be, it's a great dissertation for a university student on human endurance and what you can do when you, you know, put yourself and train yourself into a situation. It's fascinating, really. It is, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, we were really fortunate this year. One of the things that we did, which I planned on doing before we even, I mean, before I was even asked to be, you know, as co-pilot, was to put together a USA Command Center. Yes. Our United States of America Command Center truly put us where we were. Peter Cuneo, Barbara Fricke, Noah and I yeah. were all part of this command center. They really are the ones that pushed us and helped us get to where we got. I mean, it, it was amazing to see the team. I think we did have some technical issues as far as being able to communicate. Um, but otherwise, it was, it was a beautiful thing to behold. A, an entire team of people working together to try to get the United States to win a Gordon Bennett. It was it was awe inspiring. It's, I think wow. um, it definitely helped us get to where we got. That's for sure. I don't think we would have been as far ahead. I don't think we would have been able to um, push us, ourselves as hard as we did if it weren't for that team. So I want to give thanks to that team because they were an amazing group of people. Absolutely. And and if you've ever seen an iceberg, you see a small bit of ice sticking out of the water. Well, you have I don't know ten or a hundred times that below the water, and that was our team. And yep. the the amount of uh, just the incredible organization and, and the skill sets of the people that were were helping us. I mean, they were holding us up. They were keeping us in the air. Without that, this wouldn't have happened. There's no way this would have happened. So thank thank you to to all of them from the bottom of our hearts. Absolutely. Amazing, amazing story. Write that book, publish it. I will buy it and I will read it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, talk me through a little bit about the decision of um, the process, the decision process of we're going to start the landing procedure? You, you must talk about it for a few hours in advance. Can you talk me through that a little bit? Yeah, I'll be happy to talk about that. So basically what we do is we start to discuss when is the potential for landing. Mm -hmm. We're looking outward constantly to determine what are the opportunities we have coming up, um, you know, for example, last night, we wanted to talk to our weather people and find out whether or not it was a possibility for us to land in the morning or land in the evening. Would it be possible for us to go on next night? But we want to know the next opportunity we have that's available, what the landing site's going to look like and all of that. So we knew in advance that basically three nights, that was a personal best for both of us. We'd never done the three nights before. I always wondered about it and thought that it was an interesting concept and every gas pilot I ever heard speak about this talked about that third night as being a magic number yeah. and I couldn't understand it. I get it now. I totally get it now. It's, it's really tough. You know, you're definitely a lot lower on ballast, you know, you're making these decisions. But anyway, basically what happens is we had already decided we were going to land sometime between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. We knew the area that we were going to be in. We knew we wanted to avoid certain things like swamps. And so as a result, we we had a good idea of where we we're going to be. We start to prep the basket, get everything ready, everything stowed away. We have all of our safety in gear. You know, all of the things are in place so that we can do everything safely and effectively and that we're able to communicate together and execute a safe landing. What a stunning story. You're now part of an elite club, the Three Night Club. I wonder how many it is. We'll find that out. We'll look into that and try and get a number. But uh, Noah, Brenda, an absolute pleasure to know you, an honour to speak to you both right now. And I look forward to seeing you back here in Albuquerque. Love you. We love you, guy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Talking about that special three-night club. Producer Mark has worked out that 49 people have got 60 hours or more. In flight. That's incredible. That is incredible. I mean, um, I, I did also this three nights in, in this race I, I told you about going to Finland. And you, you start after two nights, you start feeling comfortable in this one square meter basket, right. actually. You know, you get used to it. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. It's getting actually better, not worse. We've got some questions, more questions coming through on YouTube, I think. Yes, we have a question from Mark for the pilot. Are there any differences be uh, between landing a gas balloon versus a hot air balloon? 
I don't know if it was heard because there was no microphone. So there's a question about landing uh, between a hot air balloon and a gas balloon. Yes, there is differences. A, a gas balloon, um, if it's falling, it's falling. It's it's steadily falling, and uh, you you have to then when you put it to an equilibrium, you you are very have to be very cautious that you don't overthrow because it will then rise all the way up again. Right. You know. So so you if you go down. Um, you you go down usually from a bigger height and you go in a steady descent to your to your landing side. It's a, it's a different. While with a hot air balloon, you approach in a, in a lower lower speed of descent to, to to that. Another question, guys. Yes, we have another question. The next question is: Are there any traditions unique to Gordon Bennett balloonists? Oh, traditions. Well, w one of the neat traditions is the Gordon Bennett mail. Yeah. Yeah. So the pilots take postcards with them in their basket, which they mail then at the point where they land and uh, so and then you receive a postcard you know which was stamped in wherever you, they landed I don't know in this case it would be Savannah all right all right then well let's get into it a little bit now let's get the map back on screen let's see the nitty-gritty we've got that France one they've put it down at two three five nine point nine five France and Germany are trying to beat that go for it Thomas Okay, so into the nitty gritty. You you see that France one has flown to Savannah, and they have flown here as you have mentioned in an incredible speed. They they are far ahead of everybody, so they set the mark. This is the mark to beat. Um, obviously, now we have two balloons up, uh, still in the air, and. Um, they, they, they are really close to each other and both of them have an advantage. So France has a little bit of an advantage because it's a little bit more north, which will give you a little bit more distance. Germany has a little bit of an advantage because it's behind France. So France will have to land first and Germany knows then what distance uh, has to be beaten. So you cannot say who is in, the, in a uh, better position right now. It will, it will be a, a close race, and if we take a look at the weather uh, patterns that we have, so here you have a weather pattern if they would have stayed up uh, high in the air. You can see if they would have stayed up high in the air, this is fast wind, it would have carried them tonight, or probably before sunrise, already over the coast, and, and, and quite, quite clearly not, not to the furthest point. So that's the reason why they went low, and if they go low, which is the, the next one, you see that the wind is turning to the north here. So in the low level, you have a more of a northerly wind, and you have a very decent wind as well. You see the, the wind pattern as being red, which says that there's a lot of wind there, while blue is light wind. So that, that's the thing. One thing we have to uh, watch out for, and that's the wind pattern in the morning, because in the morning, the wind pattern turns again back towards the sea. So it is now very important to get as far north as long as this northerly component is there, because in the morning, you will be then drawn to the sea. So, so let's see how this will continue. Yeah, uh, well, it's you know a couple of 100 kilometers to go to get in front of what France won have already put down so that's not guaranteed gonna happen is it they've got a good chance but it's not france one are not over yet no no the france one is not over um well not over i what, what i can say it's uh, incredible that they are 400 percent on the podium already yeah they know that yes. you know but there's also a chance that they will win it and um, because uh, breathing this distance will be a difficult task. It, it will be a difficult task. You have to have also the right timing that you don't get too soon to the coast. You don't get too late to the coast. Um, so that, and if, if you put here a ring here around here, you, you have to fly somewhere around Wilmington to, um, or Myrtle Beach to, to, to beat them. Well, there's USA too as well. Local talent's been flying for a long time that we've not really talked much about throughout the competition. They kind of took us by surprise a little bit. I remember one day we said, have we talked about USA too at the moment? And we hadn't. They were kind of low and a little bit far back. But wow, they finished strong. Let's check in and see what they had to say. Peter and Barbara join us. They've got some nice drinks. Congratulations on a safe landing. Yes, it was a safe landing. It was a great landing. We had a good time. What a tremendous flight. Three nights going strong through the fourth day as well. We've all been rooting for you here in the studio. 
Well, that, that was good. We needed a lot of rooting because, you know, we're not the, the youngest to go the three nights and days. But, man, we hung in there trying to do good. It's an incredible achievement at any age. For a teenager to do that would be quite astounding. But to be one of the elderly teams, to be able to pull that off, it is really, really something else. And what do you think about Noah and Brenda? First time together, first time Brenda and Gordon Bennett. Um, did they kick butt or what? Indeed. We've just had a great interview with them and we were talking about the endurance. And it was a really good, I, I look forward to you seeing their interview. It was very, very nice indeed. It's a very special achievement. Can we talk a little bit about your strategy, about your uh, your tracks? Um, mostly it was catch up. Yeah, mostly it was catch up, as Peter says, because yeah. after the first night, we were a little depressed and down when we woke up Sunday morning, seeing where we were, and we just had to fight back and yeah. do what we could yes. to get up there and do be as good as we could, and then. The, the debate about going, trying to go through the fourth night, like, uh, really in French uh, two. yeah, like French two and German one, but we thought, nah, we just needed a safe landing right. and get down. Yeah. And, and the policeman that came to our landing site that followed us as we made numerous approaches and didn't quite catch fields, they were just the greatest. <laughs> they were wonderful. And, and your, your line quite far south, was that intentional to be down there? In our landing site? Not just the no, track. On your no, track, track. Your track. track. Yeah, you were one of the more southerly teams. We were debating in the studio what your plan was, what your what your game was. Well, there is a theory that if you take the largest circle around a great circle route, you'll have the greatest distance. And we thought circling to the north eventually at the end would give us the greatest radius on the great circle route. But... That only would have worked if we'd gone the fourth night. And Willie kind of was still in the air, so still to be determined. That's exactly what he did. He yeah. Going north, um, the main reason we decided not to go fourth night was because it probably wouldn't have produced much difference in the results. We might have ended up moving up from where we were, one or two places. Yes. I don't even know where we ended up, and I guess that's still fifth, I guess. Um, still to be determined who the winner is, but... Uh, Fascinating race. It is. I mean, it's, it's like you say, still to be determined. <clears throat> Not nothing's guaranteed yet that these two teams will even overtake France. One. It's all to be played for, isn't it? Yeah, we tried to yeah. go into a fourth night in 2008. The last time Gordon Bennett was in Albuquerque, and we only made it halfway through the night. So that was in the back of our mind, also that yeah. a nighttime, the only nighttime landing we've ever done was in the 2008 Gordon Bennett, really? and we don't want to. Repeat that experience. How does this flight rate for yourselves in all the other ones? Well, it was boring as heck the first day <laughs> and slow. We were only thankful that we were high enough that we really didn't get thermal activity that day. We were very lucky, I guess, because some people did get thermal activities. We got a terrible rotor off of the mountains we went over that yeah. first night. Uh, but outside of that, we at least didn't have thermal activity, and then, and then it was just try to catch the fastest winds we could to play catch up. And I felt like we were playing catch up the whole flight. Yeah, and we don't really have any excuse because we did that same exact trajectory back in 2019 where we came down that valley, kind of a gorge into Las Vegas, New Mexico, and this time. We went over the ridge instead of down in the valley, and the guys who went down in the valley picked up some extra speed and kind of got slingshotted out. Uh, hence, we, at one point very early in the race, were in first place, but um, we we didn't move as far south as the rest of the teams did, so that's just one of the lucks of the draw. Um, there is a certain um, – it's a lot of skill, but there's a certain amount of luck also yeah. in – the way these things work and we're happy with the results one of our goals is always to get across the mississippi river and we've never crossed it as far south before so we did That's this true. time so that was a new one for yeah. us that was true we wanted to we wanted to be in the top 10 in the garden bennett if we could wow. it's always nice to be there and, and being in the top five we're extremely happy being in the top five 
the Gordon Bennett is absolutely outstanding. You are an absolute inspiration, the pair of you. And I must say, if I just walked in there and sat down with you, you look like you've just got ready and come out. I wouldn't have thought you'd been flying for 60 odd hours. We no. went washed up at the hotel. Yeah, we, do, we did get to wash our face and hands and use a real potty. Yeah, good. Well, listen, enjoy dinner. Have, have you ordered dinner yet? We have. Yeah, we have. It's We're just waiting. It's getting a smash burger. Good. Well, it, guacamole. You, you deserve it. I couldn't get green chili here. You got, no, really? Oh, yeah, what a surprise. Yeah. All the things that we haven't been able to eat for months because we were trying to lose weight, we can now go eat. <laughs> Well, enjoy your evening, guys, and have a nice rest tonight. And I close by saying we'll, we'll see you back congratulations here. Congratulations to Noah and Brenda. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah, do you want to give them a special message? Any? I'm sure they'll be watching later. Well, um, we can't really call them our protégés, but this is a case of the uh, student exceed the mm. trainer because we did do a training flight with them probably five years ago, and uh, they're just uh, to the next generation of American gas bonus. Wow. I hope. And thank you for publicizing gas ballooning so much. I hope it gets more people involved. Yep. You and Blaser and Biotech and all the guys that are rooting for us. Yep. You know, there are a lot of people who are very critical to the success of any gas balloon team, the meteorologists, the ground crew, but especially the chase crew who give up days and days and nights and nights of their time to chase us cross country and then bring us back home again. And, I think we particularly have a really wonderful Chase crew. This is Sue and Ray Palmer, if I could introduce them. Sue and Ray, good evening. Let's turn around and find them. Hi, Hi, Sue. Hi, Ray. How are you doing, Ray? Tell me, tell me about the journey. How has it been? Oh, it's an adventure. It's an adventure. Yeah. Yes. Have you done this before? Oh, yes. We've been chasing for Peter and Barbara since 2013. What was the highlight for you on this journey particularly? On this one? Yeah. There's a highlight every time we chase. But I think the weirdest highlight was um, we, as we were turning around, we had to turn around to go back to Peter and Barbara because we had gone too far east. The police closed the road directly behind me as I passed, and we saw two hound dogs run across the road followed by two police officers and we think there was a prison break nearby wow so as i'm smacking the accelerator um <laughs> behind the wheel i said if we see someone in stripes it's no we didn't because i don't want to get involved in this <laughs> wow what a story that is that is amazing <laughs> we saw nothing we saw nothing <laughs> Hey, thanks, this guys. This is all so true. They drove completely around Lake Superior to oh, yeah. catch us one time. 2013, we drove all the way around Lake Superior to catch them. So <laughs> You've had some good adventures. Yeah, it's so much fun. That's why we do it. Alabama's easy. Alabama was easy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. I enjoy your evening. Enjoy your dinner. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Also, best wishes to Poland One. I hope they're going to recover very fast. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your dinner. You're welcome. Okay. Thank yep. you. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Brilliant stuff. We're getting lots of questions coming through on social media, Thomas. Guys, what have we got? So we got another question. Um, do the balloon pilots talk with each other on the radio during the race? For example, the two last flying ones tonight. Oh yes, they 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 are talking to each other. Um, e either they are talking to each other on a separate frequency, or usually they are also on the same air traffic frequency. But but they talk to each other. But they don't disclose too much to each other. So like, how much ballast do I have? Or so, you you are more more like a friendly encouragement uh, kind of talk. <laughs> Flo? And we have another question also related to tonight. What would you consider a safe amount of ballast and weight for the final night's flight? Well, that's a good question, um, and it depends on what night you're talking about. So the first night needs the most ballast, and the further on the race goes, the less ballast you need because you have less um, hydrogen in the balloon. So in a fourth night, I, I think something around um, 70 kilos is absolutely 70, 80 kilos is sufficient to go through the through the the night, like the fourth night. So uh, what about uh, oh, Mark's got a question? Sorry, go ahead, Mark. Because there was actually a follow-on question as well. Is that like, is the um, hydrogen depletion a function of time on the en envelope, or 
because of the ascending and descending because you were mentioning just now that yeah. you have less hydrogen yeah, so so the main depletion of hydrogen is due to the sun so since the sun heats up the balloon the uh, hydrogen is expanding and it expands more than the balloon can carry and it's uh, it's released on the on the bottom end through the appendix and that's the main topic why we are losing hydrogen then in the night the hydrogen contracts it has less lift then and uh, that's when you use the ballast it's game on two teams in the sky what about Woodsy and Steffi Woodsy and Steffi also a very com uh, competitive team and they have landed so let's see what they have to tell us Austria 2 join us from an undisclosed <laughs> location hello everybody how are you doing very good thank you you look fresh and clean yes we just uh, had a shower we arrived in uh, Memphis at the hotel and uh, we just came fresh out of, out of the shower guys what an adventure three nights incredible yes it was amazing <laughs> Crazy. How are you all feeling now? You, you you look happy. You look smiley. Yes, actually, we just we was just waiting for your call because we are up for a beer and the steak here. Yeah. So uh, we're waiting on you. You're late, man. <laughs> hey, we've been here for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your strategy. Tell me about the plan. It was um, was that where you wanted to be? Uh yeah go as uh, far west as possible uh we had some uh, hiccups on the way yes we, we went into some uh some uh yeah, posi bad positions uh where we did not like we where we actually got left behind and it took us some time to catch up and yeah it's yeah at the end it was just a, a matter of uh, getting the maximum performance out uh, from us as a team not uh, competing for like the front rows yeah exactly so your position where you were back there we were wondering whether that was a strategic move or whether you just got left with the wins no it was just a bad pilot <laughs> our command center did a good good job but uh yeah we actually we, we didn't have so much time to practice and uh yeah it was just uh i would say it's it's up on us the strategy was great but uh yeah we had some hiccups on the way and we learned a lot and that's the good the good part of it did you easily decide about the third night or did it take a lot of discussion mm, yeah normally the, the decision comes quite easy it depends on whether how much pellets you use on the cooling yeah and uh, if that's moderate and you have enough or you make a decision on with how many bags you want to go into the third night so that was actually quite easy. So either you go landing just after sunset or you continue. And what's your record before this flight? Sorry, it's again? Your record, your previous record of a gas balloon flight? Uh, my previous record, I, I, I did some, actually me and Steffi were discussing. It's definitely for Steffi the, the longest flight. Yes. She did? Yes. And uh, I think I had like one or two hours more already, but uh, it was yeah, quite long. But it didn't, at the end, it didn't feel. It. At the beginning, it felt longer, but it, it's also, if you, if you think of it back, it's kind of a blur. So it takes some time to, you know, just get all the whole story together. So, well, just a better to... question for in two days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to take my impartial head off for a moment, I want to say, Thank you from all the skydivers in the world for showing the endurance. Yeah, yeah. you know, actually, the, the funny thing was when we landed, we had a guy coming up with a pickup truck. Yeah. And he saw my uh, Skydive Pinkatovi t-shirt and he's like, oh, you're a skydiver? <laughs> I was skydiving in the 90s. So, yeah. <laughs> there's skydivers everywhere. <laughs> and, and Steffi, with your career as an explorer and an adventurer, this really... It's right in your ballpark. I can feel a, a TED talk coming in the future. No, it's a, it's a really nice opportunity to take part in a race like this. It's just crazy. It's, uh, it's really nice. I think it sometimes feels more adventurous for the people down because we have a lot of downtime, waiting time, yeah. especially now yeah. with quiet nights and actually also quiet days. Um, but I want to go. I feel comfortable in the balloon. 
Well, we look forward to seeing you at the next event, very much so. I'm going to let you get your steak and your beers. Bye-bye. Thanks, Regan. Take bye -bye. care. See you See back you here. Bye-bye. You're very good friends with these, Thomas. Yes, yes. I, I like them so much. If you are in, at a place in Klatovi, um, it's so warm and I, I like being around them. Um, and it's not that far from Prague. So I'm, I'm very happy that they had such a wonderful flight. Into the fourth night. We've got a little bit more content for you. So you can see this is approximately the position of the two balloons. One is a little bit more north, one is a little bit more south. If they stay high, they will they will end up somewhere in Myrtle Beach. Actually, um, this is this is now from here some 12, 16 hours. So in the morning they would land in Myrtle Beach. So the the reason why they are low no, now and high, I'm saying about 2,000, 3,000 meters. The the reason why they are going low, it's taking them more to the north. So they will go over Columbia and South Carolina, and go towards Wilmington and and uh, try try to get this corner here. Um, so so let's see how they will end up. Um, I'm I'm am quite sure that um, they will go through the whole night, and I'm very convinced um, that there will be a fierce fighting in the morning. I don't know when they will land, but I I think they will fight until their last drop of sand or drop uh, last corn of sand. <laughs> Keep subscribing for us, hit those like buttons and give us a share as well. We're going to be back tomorrow morning, bright and early. We've got one more video to come for you right at the very end, so stick around. 6.30 tomorrow morning is our morning daybreak show. It's going to tell us what's happening right now. France 1 up in the lead, being chased by France and by Germany. And we've got Benny Eimers on the hunt. Bye-bye. Good evening from Germany 1. We're still continuing our flight. See our night instruments. You can hear the dogs. And I will show you. Maybe you can see the ground up there. It's, we are very low, flying 1,000 feet above ground. To slow down a little bit, so we're not too fast. leaving the country sorry for the bad pictures but it's very dark here we have no moon in the moment see you tomorrow <laughs>